can see it actually overruns pretty easy. What? A $300 alternator is bad because the pulley on the front's bad? Let's take a look at these, see how these tick. So this right here is a decoupling pulley, and it doesn't matter, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, Volkswagen, I think Toyota, everybody is using these for the past 10 to 15 years. And first, they weren't making replacements and you had to buy the whole new alternator. Now it's to the point you can actually buy replacements. About 100 bucks. I found this cheap off-brand knockoff for roughly 25, 30 bucks. Um, so they're coming down in price, but still, I'd like to see if you can just actually replace parts in there and not have to replace the entire thing. Because some of them also, you have to use a special tool and puller to even get these off. But I thought we'd go inside and see how these tick, how they actually work. Um, but as a basic of how they work is essentially the, the alternator is attached to the center, the belt is attached to the outside, and it's allowed to spin one direction and freely and not the other. So in this direction, it's grabbing the alternator. This direction, it's not. Essentially, they did that because they, for fuel economy. That's essentially all I can think of is for fuel economy. Um, every time the engine has to shift, and these days are putting so many gears in automatic transmissions to try to you know, essentially to try to beat what a manual transmission could do with fuel economy. And in doing that, you know, the engine has to rev, shift, and do that seven, sometimes 10 times in just a, a takeoff cycle. And every time the engine has to shift down, the alternator would go with it. This essentially allows the alternator, you know, maybe let's say the alternator is spending at 5,000 RPM. The engine drops down to 1,000 RPMs and shifts back up, you know, in that moment, that alternator slows down maybe to 3,000 RPM or something, and then the engine catches back up to it, catches it, and takes it off again. So the alternator, the voltage coming out of it is smoother, a little bit easier on all the belt and pulley and everything, but essentially it saves just a minuscule amount of gas. But let's take this apart and see exactly how these tick. All the ones I've seen have a little dust protector, so I just used a cold chisel and peeled that off. Um, I know that Volkswagen uses a weird spline tool specialty. This is a Chrysler product. Um, this one has well under 100,000 miles, and it seems that these overrunning clutches are only going maybe 100,000 miles. So, you know, 60,000 miles. This one is a 17 millimeter, pretty easy. Already broke it free, but that's it. That's how you take it off. This one, the you can obviously see in here the bearing ate, ate itself away. And the pulley actually, because of that, wasn't actually centered. It was actually wobbling. It's moving about a sixteenth of an inch. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Theoretically, there's going to be a sprag clutch in here, which is just kind of like, um, essentially just looks like flat roller bearings that just lock up in a direction. There's a little kind of a ramp. Um, and we just have a bearing right here. And obviously, this bearing is what went out on this. I mean, can we just replace a $5 bearing? Um, some of these things are pushing, you know, some of these pulleys are pushing $200 from what I saw. So it looks like this is smaller and that is bigger. So if it just pushes out this side, this socket might not be big enough. It's an inch and a half. I'm just going to put it there. I'm just going to give it some wax. Yeah, it moved. Actually, I think it moved the very first time, but I think my socket isn't big enough. Let me find something else. We're getting there. You don't really see exactly how it comes apart. Let's start, let's just take the spring off. I'm not seeing where we're into the sprag clutch yet. That's that end's stuck down in there. Is it actually using the spring tension to tighten down around this that tightens down 
around the center shaft. Is that it? I think that might be it. It's just using the spring tension. So, you know, it's, when this tightens up, this gets smaller. And essentially, that's uh, clamping down on the pulley to make it move. And in the other direction, it opens up and allowing it to freewheel. Wow, super basic. It's not a sprag clutch really at all. It's a little step right in there. So I thought, so I took the cold chisel from the inside and just tapped. And this is just a, that is just like a bushing. This would go on the alternator first. So this is the actual inside of the bearing and it's just barely held in. You see this thin piece in there. So I think the whole bearing should pull off now just with minimal persuasion in that direction. No, it's not on there tight at all, really at all. There you go. So, you'd read the number off this, replace this, and this whole pulley, I could put this back together right now. I don't think there's anything wrong with it besides this. Clean it up, replace that bearing, and I could put this back together, put it on, and be done. That's what you call fixing something, not just part swapping. But I already bought a new one, so I'm going to be a dirty part swapper. See if we can pull this apart further, though. And now the whole thing, tire assembly pulls off. And so you have your outer spring and apparently an inner spring. So these two springs just bind on each other. And so this spring right here clamps down on the inner spring and causes it to move. And this spring, the inner spring is actually under tension. So you can see where that um, bearing sat down on this lip. So it actually is under tension. So that's why it was actually easy, so easy for me to remove the bearing is because you have the spring pushing it off. There's nothing to this. This easily is repairable. Easily a uh, you know $5 bearing and this goes back into service. There we go. The bearing is actually the only thing that holds everything together. Uh, I cleaned it up. Of course, it needs a new bearing in the end, but I just wanted to see if I could reassemble it easy. And yeah, it's actually working now. It actually works really good. Besides, the bearing is toast, but that wouldn't be a hard repair at all. Maybe a 10-minute job um, to swap out that bearing. That's no harder than swapping out the thing. So kind of cool. So they are repairable. If you want to know how to grease these bearings, I have a whole video on that and how much grease not to put in. Let's see if you can catch how much, I'm going to hold this one still, you see the red mark up here, how much it overruns. And you see that? You can see it actually overruns pretty easy. So, that would definitely help it out. You know, help out fuel economy. It's kind of cool. Kind of annoying that $300, $500 alternators or $1,000 alternators probably on a BMW or something are going bad because of this such a simple little design. Hey, what do you think? We're in a predicament? Maybe. Get out.